Hi, this is King Harp. I just want to come and talk to you guys because we live this ADOS lifestyle, this foundational black American lifestyle. As Tariq Nasheed would say, and Yvette Cornell would say ADOS. Black Truth would say black first. We're all doing the same damn thing. I'm just going to come out and say it. We got these Latino people. We got uh, over here, not just Latinos, but all groups of the world are over here on top of us. And if black people, descendants of slavery, do not know black folks, foundational black Americans, descendants of slavery, ADOS, that we need to do politics and implement our argument and actually sustain government power in terms of respect, then we are foolish, very foolish. And this is serious. This is not just a small talking point. It's an extreme talking point, but it's a reality. And this is what I don't think that we want to do. It's understand which space that we're in, and they have bid it on the fact that we will be this way. It's 45 million of us in this country, and we need to understand that. It's politics that has us in the shape that we're in, even in terms of police brutality. This is political. When you know, when a, when a, when a nation has considered you non-important through our government, and government has stated that you are somebody who are to be used and exploited, and different things of that nature, you don't know in terms of which you exploited. You really don't, and what you have been in the thirty years of you getting here. That means you've experienced the war on drugs or manipulation. That means you have experienced them telling you what kind of expertise you should have. And that's entertainment, subservient football players, subservient basketball players, and subservient rappers while other people get billions of dollars, not holding any capital, not holding any capital, local to capital or super capital. All these other groups in this country have super capital and local. They're cracking open local. They have local, I'm sorry, local capital. And now they're cracking open super capital, especially the East Indians, especially the, uh, the, the Asian people, whereas though they buying housing and condos and selling people. And it's really going on in Atlanta, in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. They say that black people populate Atlanta so much. No, Atlanta's populated a lot because of immigration. People got, these Mexicans got sanctuary cities where they are now ruling. It's so bad they're taking opportunity from white people that are middle class. They have locked us out and they're trying to lock us out even more. This is time to insert the government in terms of politics. And black people need to understand that. We need to have a better argument than the fact that Donald Trump is a racist. Donald Trump may be a racist, but our argument is more, we have a more substantial and a more powerful argument than Donald Trump is a racist. We need to stop talking. We need, as black people, to stop talking like we are five years old when it comes down to politics. We need to stop that. That is what's getting us in trouble. We need to understand lesser evils. We have no friends politically. We need to know this. And we need to do lesser evils and understand that both basically all black people are independent. But I have a more Republican mindset because I'm pro-American in my heart. I understand this country. And my family was a military. And I understand the fight. I understand that we are American. We are literally American people. We have the richness of America in our lineage, but not in terms of what we reciprocated as an American. And this is what the problem is. We have not been truly made American in terms of implementing the law, but the Constitution has rolled up for us. The law has already stated who we are. We have not implemented that because we have people that are in authority that are from, that are our legacy, that is our lineage. Shirley Chisholm, you got John, John Lewis in Atlanta, his his politicians, his, I mean, his um computer, when he put it up, his ledger is for immigration. And he's he, that means he has no self-preservation in terms of his own group. He walked with Dr. King through Selma. You got to understand what's going on here, guys. And then you got 
all you got Sheila Lee Jackson, who's the head of Black Congressional Black Caucus from Jamaica. She does not have our um, blood sacrifice inside this first world. She came here also to experience what we have done, blood sacrifice, as descendants of slaves and as slaves, and what our parents have done. Our family have been the richest country in the world, and we have not got compensated in terms of legacy. And that is in unconstitutional. And we have to know that in order to implement in terms of political arena. And this is why we're in the shape that we're in. And this is a foremost reason why we've been explored the way we have. It is ridiculous in terms of the what happened to us. We need to wake up and wake up now. I mean, you got, uh, you got, um, James Clyburn running around telling ADOS people laughing at them, talking about you ain't getting no reparations. He's saying it to himself and don't even realize it, James Clyburn. He's saying it to his children, his community. That's no self-preservation. We are made to be trapped in a feudalism. Wake up, people. It is time for us to do politics. So that we can stop dying in the street. So that we can stop being poor in communities and sustain some type of wealth that they have made us contagion to. We are trapped in a feudalism. It's like a movie, but it's a reality to us. To them, it's an advantage in a way of life. To us, it is a way of life. But it's a horrifying film that we actually live. You know how you have a bad dream, you wake up? Well, we're in a dream that, that's bad politically, but... We not wake, we're not waking up. We're not waking up. This is what we have to do. This is what we eat and live and deal with in our health. This is what we digest, working subservient to the society, not being corrected for a historical anchor like the, like the American Indians, the Japanese, like the Jews that came here from the Holocaust, not being protected. We paying in tuitions back for college. People are parroting in our organizations, cracking open our HBCU, uh, HBCUs, cracking, jumping on our blood lineage, birthright citizenship, their children being born here. They are talking about us, saying that we don't deserve it. They do. They left their country to come here in terms of being cowards to get what we built for free labor. And this is what Donald Trump, we should have agreed with the president on that, send them home. However, he may be a racist, but it does a bigger picture. We need to understand lesser evils in government. We are not politically anchored in terms of knowledge. We are so far behind, literally so far behind. Government choose winners and losers, and they have chosen us to be a bottom cast and the battery to society, to society and to success this country in terms of anybody who become constituents to whiteness. And that means a religion. White Being white is a religion. It's not a color. I've, I've understood that solely on my own. I can choose the religion of being white as myself, but I have not chose that religion. Thank you for joining me, guys. You need to come and you need to understand that we need to get out here and be about what we're doing and we need to get in these town halls. I'm going to be going to John. I'm going to be uh, hovering over John Lewis because I'm in Atlanta. We need to do something quick, and we need to argue the right way. And I think that's what we're doing. I'm going to give pats on the back because I think that's what we are really doing.